Good afternoon, <clears throat> everybody. Um, I want to uh, deal with um, a very important key to um, to entering into the rest of God and experiencing the peace, receiving it more so. Uh, give me one second. <clears throat> Warm it up a little bit in here. All right. Go to the book of John. Those of you who can and those of you who can't at the moment. Um, you can just listen, I promise you, it's in there. <clears throat> so, let's talk about the rest of God and let's talk about the peace of God. These are, again, keys, very important keys to really receiving all things that God has for you. This is really the beginning of, of um, being able to tap into that and to be magnetic to the things that the Lord has for you and to be able to um, experience his presence um, in a deeper way than just going through the motions and just experiencing residue but not getting the fullness if even experiencing residue. But um, let's, uh, let's deal with this. The Gospel of John, chapter 20. And let's start at verse 16. And um, I'll read down. And Jesus said to her, Mary, talking to uh, Mary Magdalene, there was two Marys. There was Mary, the mother uh, of Jesus, and uh, Mary Magdalene. So <clears throat> she turned and said to him, Rabbi, which is to say teacher. Rabbi means teacher or rabbi means teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not cling to me for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and um, your father and to my God and your God. Now, now keep in mind when, when Jesus says, I'm ascending to my father and my God, understand that the physical nature of Jesus is speaking there. This is not the spirit speaking this is the flesh speaking the flesh of Jesus was created by God and the flesh of Jesus is called son of God and the flesh of Jesus is not God the flesh of Jesus has a God but the spirit that was inside that flesh was God or part of the very same person, the very same spirit who we call the Father. <clears throat> Let's continue. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Now let's stop there for a minute. This is after the resurrection of Jesus. Okay, he went through the crucifixion already. Uh, he was buried for three days in the tomb, and then he was risen from the dead. Um, so his body was sown in corruption. It was sown in um, mortality, but then it was raised in immortality. So somewhere between the, somewhere between the resurrection uh, of the dead of, of, of Jesus 
um, his body was changed and then made into an immortal body. Which is one of the reasons why they're not going to find the body of Jesus. Doesn't even make sense for them to be looking for it because it, when he was risen. So he's not there. He ascended into heaven and the body was then changed and made into an immortal body which can never die. Um, it, it is not living based on blood anymore. Before the crucifixion, he was he was living based on blood, but um, all the blood came out that body, and then he was risen, and now he is he is that body is being preserved based on power, based on anointing, no blood. <clears throat> so they're not going to find that body. He's risen, and he is immortal, and he is in heaven with the Father. That's where the body is. <clears throat> now watch this. Let's continue in verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Watch this. After Jesus was risen from the dead, um, the first thing that he said to his disciples was, Peace be with you. That's the first thing he said. Peace be with you. I'm, I'm digging to that. I'm going to dig into that in a minute. And when he had said this, verse 20, he showed them his hands and his side. The wounds were still there. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, this is the second time that uh, of what he had to say to them after he was risen. This is how important, you're going to see how important this is. Why this is the first thing that he had to say. Peace. To you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Before he even deals with anything about receiving the Holy Spirit. The first thing he deals with with them is peace. He speaks divine peace over his disciples first. Now, what does that do? Why is that? Well, Jesus said that the peace that he gives is not the same as the peace that the world gives. It's not the same kind of peace that you're going to get from yoga. It's not the same kind of peace that you're going to get from meditation. It's not the same kind of peace that you're going to get from um, uh, uh, any worship of the sun, moon, or stars. It's not that peace. That's the peace of the world. That's temporary. That doesn't last. But the peace that he gives is a divine inward peace. Not only that. But it is, to sum it, to sum it down to its most narrow sense, is it is peace with God. Meaning, no condemnation. Meaning, no danger of judgment. Meaning, justification. Meaning, right standing with God. Meaning, accepted by God. So, it, so the peace that he speaks to them is a peace with God. Meaning, he's not angry with you no more. Meaning, this is not like the law anymore. This is no longer condemnation. This is no longer judgment. This is no longer woe is you. This is no longer 
be you worried about all your faults and issues and sins. But this is a piece that says it is finished. I, I have covered it. I have paid the price for your sins. And I have made you acceptable before God. I have, I, I have taken out of the way the, uh, the requirements of self-effort and performance before God. And, 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 I, and I have made you acceptable. I have justified you. So he's speaking, he's speaking peace with God. Now watch this. Before he breathes on them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, now, first of all, only God can breathe the Holy Ghost out on someone. Jesus is doing it. Um, he's breathing the Holy Ghost out on them because there's a part of him that is God, which is the spirit part of him. The inside, what's in that body, is part of the, the living God. So he breathes on them just like God breathed the Holy Spirit on Adam and Adam became a living being, a living soul. Jesus is now doing the same thing and breathing the Holy Spirit out on his disciples. But before he does so, he speaks peace to them. Peace with God is connected to receiving the Holy Ghost. I'm going to say that again. Peace with God is connected to receiving the Holy Ghost. If you're not at peace with God, if you don't understand that your sins have been covered, that they've been paid for, that God is not angry with you, that he's not even judging you based on your works. He's judging you based on your faith in Jesus. If you don't understand that, then that prevents you from receiving the Holy Ghost. That prevents you from receiving anything from God. It, pre it prevents your prayers from being answered. It prevents uh, a, 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 a closeness of connection. You're missing all of that if, you, if you're walking in condemnation. If you're walking in uh, self-effort to try to, to earn your approval based on your performance, then you're trusting yourself. You're not trusting Jesus. You're not trusting that that he paid for it for you, that he covered it for you. You're not, you're not trusting uh, that, 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 that he's sufficient. You're, you're trying to add something to the finished work of Jesus. So the first thing that, that he, he speaks to his disciples is peace. Twice. Peace be with you. No condemnation. None of that. None of that judgment. None of that woe is me. None of that putting your head down. None of that. Peace be with you. I, I've settled it. I've taken care of the sin problem with you. Okay? And you are now the righteousness of God. Now let's look at the book of Hebrews and let's deal with some rest. Okay? Let's deal with the promise of rest. I'm going to help you understand this. I'm going to help you understand what God requires you to do under grace. Okay. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. And again, if you don't have um, the Bible handy with you, then you can just listen and read it later. I promise you it's there. So once again, Hebrews chapter 4, let's look at verse, um, actually, let's, let's back up a little bit. Um, 
and look at verse 7 of the third chapter. Verse 7 of the third chapter of the book of Hebrews. And let's read down because I, I want you to get the full picture of what, what is being said here. All right. Hebrews 3, chapter 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40, 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, watch this, they always go astray in their hearts. They always go astray in their hearts, in their hearts. Watch this. They always go astray in their hearts and have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware. In other words, warning. Beware. Be cautious. He's talking to us now. Beware. Be cautious, brethren. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. So watch this. They did not enter Israel. Israel, back in the Old Testament, did not enter the rest of God because of unbelief. And God was angry with them because they went astray in their hearts through the sin of unbelief. Hear this. The only sin that can separate you from God is the sin of unbelief unbelief in the gospel in the finished work of Jesus if you don't properly believe in the gospel in the finished work that you've been saved by grace and justified and made righteous before God and that you have peace with God and he's not angry with you. Your judgment has already been settled and you have been, um, your salvation has already been taken care of. If you don't believe that, then you will fall according to the same example of unbelief that um, natural Israel fell. They went astray in their hearts through unbelief. So uh, uh, the writer gives us a warning, um, and it is believed to be Paul is the, the writer of, uh, of, of Hebrews, but we're, but we're not clear on actually who, but it is believed to be Paul. And he says, beware, brethren, verse 12, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Unbelief, hear me, unbelief in the gospel and the finished work of Jesus is considered an evil heart. If, 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 hear me, if you do not believe that your sins was covered and paid for and you're walking in condemnation, and you're not living in the freedom and in the liberty and lifting your head up. And you're so worried about your performance and action and thinking that that is what qualifies you. Then what's in you is an evil heart of unbelief. You're trusting yourself. You're trusting your performance. You're saying everything you paid for on the cross. No thank you. I'm going to do it myself. And when you do that, you insult and anger God. That can get him angry. Unbelief. This is the reason why you've got to be careful of uh, 
listening to everything that's preached in some of these churches because there are some preachers that are preaching the letter instead of the spirit. They're preaching condemnation. Mm -hmm. They're preaching performance-based doctrine where it's about you and not Jesus. It's about your performance and not Jesus. It's about you uh, uh, cleaning this up, cleaning that up in order to be accepted. But no, 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 that's not the gospel. The gospel is peace be with you. I've accepted you as is. And that can never change. That can never be undone unless you don't believe it anymore. So you got to be careful about listening to uh, messages of condemnation where it is targeted toward your performance. And you start getting in um, trying to earn your approval by fasting 40 days, by doing this, doing that, keeping this, keeping that, doing this law, doing that law, all of these works of the law, all of these traditions. When, when you get pushed into that, then you go astray from God, thinking that you're drawn close to him, vainly puffed up in your head, thinking that because you did a bunch of good performances that based on that, you're closer. Based on that, you, you've drawn near to God. You, you, you can't draw near to him based on performance. You can only draw near to him based on faith, believing the gospel, believing the performance of Jesus for you. That's the only way that you can, you can really connect. Otherwise, like he said, brethren, beware, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Watch what it does. Watch what unbelief does. Let me continue. In departing from the living God. Departing. Departing. Meaning. Meaning. Meaning this. De to depart means this. You going this way. You left God. You forsake him because you're trusting in your own righteousness and not his you're living by works and not by faith this is why we're to fight the good fight of faith the trick of the devil understand he's been around for a long time his trick is not to come to you looking like devil you can recognize that. His trick is to come to you with a form of godliness. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to let that settle in for a minute. His trick is to come to you with a form of godliness. And to make you think you're doing something that God requires. And that you're walking in his way. It's a form of godliness but denies the power. Why does it deny the power? Because it doesn't trust in Jesus. It doesn't trust in the finished work. It doesn't trust in his righteousness. It makes it about you and about your performance and about how good you are and about how many laws you can keep and about how many joints you didn't smoke and about how much cussing you didn't do. It makes it about your performance in order to be approved. This is a false gospel. The one where it's about you, your performance, what you're doing, all about you, all about your, uh, your, your outward uh, works. That's legalism. That's condemnation. That's what Jesus came to get you free from. Yeah. Remember, he said, I did not come into the world to condemn the world. But they're preaching condemnation. They're preaching judgment. They're preaching fire and brimstone. They're preaching hell or holiness. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. But Jesus said that I did not come to condemn the world. I came that the world through faith in me might be saved. God is not interested in your performance. He's interested in your faith. Because your faith in the finished work will connect you with him. And if you're connected with him, then as a result of that connection, the performance will come. The works will come as a result of the anointing, not a result of um, your effort and your practice of cutting down on this and cutting down on that and good works versus bad works. That's not how, that's not how your performance uh, becomes victorious. It becomes victorious by the Spirit of God, but you, you, but you don't have the Spirit of God. You don't have the Holy Ghost if you're depending on yourself. You, you, you don't have the anointing if, if you're trusting in your own righteousness to qualify you with God. As, uh, again, he said that if you don't believe, if, if you're not living by faith, if, if you're not saying the reason why God accepts me is because I believe in Jesus. And because I believe and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, I have been given credit for the works of Jesus, the perfect works of Jesus, and God has justified me based on the works of Jesus, not based on my works. If that's not what you believe, then the Bible says you have an evil heart of unbelief, and that has caused you to depart from God. And now you have went into the works of the law where now you're trusting in your performance to connect you with God. You're living by works and not living by faith. When you do that, that separates you from God. That's why your prayer can't get, can't get through, can't get no answer, can't get no blessing. You ask God to heal you. He won't. That's why, because you, you've departed from him by by not living by faith you've added to it you've, you've said that jesus isn't enough you've said that all that he paid for that 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 wasn't enough i i gotta i gotta do something i gotta do something on the outside i got to i've got to qualify in order to be accepted i i, I gotta stop everything in order to be accepted actually no you don't you you're accepted up front. See, you're accepted up front. I'm talking about while you're a mess. I'm talking about while you, you're full of cussing. I'm talking about while you, 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 you're full of things that you need to be delivered from. You're accepted based on the performance of Jesus, based on the faith in him. Now why? Now why? Does God do that because he, 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 he doesn't care? He doesn't, he doesn't care if you change or not? No, no, he, he, he does that because that is the way to actually get you changed. See, what you have to understand is <clears throat> in order to change, in order to be delivered from an addiction or a habit or something something wrong with you in order for you to be delivered from the wrong actions okay in order for that to happen you can't do that on your own because the creature that you are the flesh that you carry carries sin nature in it so you're going to struggle with that for the rest of your life the only way that you can overcome it is you need power from God. You need the Spirit of God to dwell in you and for Him to work that change from the inside out. But the only way that you can receive that connection is, is you've got to believe in the finished work of Jesus. Now here's what God does. When you believe, and I'm talking about messy you. I'm not talking about flawless you. I'm talking about messy you. 
when messy you believes in the finished work of Jesus and says, I'm saved right now, regardless of my performance. I'm saved right now. I'm sanctified right now. I'm holy right now. I'm righteous right now. I'm basing that not on my performance. I'm basing that on his performance. His works has qualified me, not mine. His effort has qualified me, not mine. Now, be, now because of that, because of I'm believing that, I'm depending on Jesus now. And I'm saying that you are the reason I'm accepted. This don't have nothing to do with me. I'm a mess. I'm accepted because of you. God is looking at your works and he's treating me like those are my works. And he's saying, come on in. <laughs> now, now watch this, watch this. Because he has made that way available, this gives you the right to receive the presence of God on you, receive the anointing of God on you. And what happens when you receive that anointing, it actually does change you. And your works begin to clean up because of a connection. As I said before, he says that you are the branches. Jesus is the vine. The Father is the vine dresser. So the Father gives the vine what to give the branch. The way that the branch bears fruit is it bears fruit as a result of being connected to the vine. It doesn't bear fruit based on effort. It doesn't bear fruit based on anything apart from the vine. It bears fruit from being connected to the vine. So it's a connection issue. That's what changes you. That's what gets you delivered. That's what causes you to stop cussing. That's what causes you to stop with the drugs. That's what causes you to stop all the stuff that needs to be cleaned up. You don't need to teach people. You don't need to preach to people about their sins. You need to preach to them about righteousness, about how to get connected, <laughs> about how to live by faith. When you do that, then the rest of it naturally flows. The rest of it happens as a result of connection. So again, let me read verse 12 again. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, that is unbelief in the finished work of Jesus, and departing from the living God. Unbelief causes you and God to separate. Y'all ain't connected. That's why you can't pray. That's why you can't get no answers. Y'all ain't connected. You're depending on your works. You're not living by faith. So you've, you've left God. You've left him. Unless you come return by living by faith. Now, let, 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 let's read some more. Let's read some more. Let's read some more. Okay, verse 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Now, when we, when we hear deceitfulness of sin, we start thinking effort. No, it's not talking about that. It's not talking about your works. It's talking about the sin of unbelief. The sin of unbelief. The sin that says, um, I'm going to start living for God, so I'm going to keep all these commandments and do this, do that, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. When you start living like that, you're trusting in the law. You're trusting in works of the law to save you, not Jesus. You're going by the Old Testament, not the New Testament. You're not under the Old Covenant. You're under the New Covenant. The New Covenant is lived by faith. The Spirit of God will, will come upon you, and the Spirit of God will change you and make you keep the commandments. His laws will be written in you, and, 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 and the nature of of God will be imputed on the inside of you, which will cause you to be different on the outside. That's how you do it. Not based on, I'm going to climb up the mountain. 
And if I didn't get it right today, I'll get it right tomorrow. No, that's works. That's works of the law. You got to be careful about listening to that kind of preaching, too, because the devil uses it a lot in order. And that's why so many people messed up in the church. Haven't you noticed? Yeah, I'm sure you have. That's why there's so many people in the church dying of sickness, praying for healing, dying of sickness, not receiving nothing from God. You know why? Because they're living by works. Pastors getting up there, sitting there, preaching condemnation to them, preaching the law to them, preaching legalism, preaching that you got to earn it by works. And, and, and when, you, when, you, when, they, when they do that, they're putting you under the law, under the curse of Adam, which separates you from God. And, 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 but, but if you live by faith, then you receive the blessing of, of God, of Abraham on you, and it connects you to God. And you cannot be separated Unless you don't believe. So even in your faults and in your issues, you'll still have that one-on-one -on -one connection with God if you believe. <clears throat> so let's continue. Okay, verse 14. For we, talking about us now, for we, he's comparing us with physical Israel from the Old Testament, the Jews from the Old Testament. He says, for we, talking about the Gentile nation. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold to the beginning. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. What confidence? The confidence that Jesus paid the price. I don't need to pay for it. I don't need to earn it. I'm, I'm acceptable. Yeah, I made five mistakes today. I did five things I shouldn't have did. I can still come into the presence of God like I didn't do nothing wrong and, and connect with him because, because he's not looking at that. He's looking at my faith in Jesus and he's looking at the righteousness of Jesus and finding me faultless, blameless, innocent, holy. It, I'm telling y'all the truth, man. It is like God doesn't see your sin. I'm going to say that again. It is like God does not see your sin. It's, it's like it don't exist. You need to come to him understanding that's how he sees you. Now, when you start going by your performance, then you're saying the blood don't cover you. You're saying that the works on the cross wasn't wasn't enough punishment <laughs> do you understand why jesus was crucified <clears throat> that was the penalty for your sin that was the price for it okay so he had to do that in order to pay for a payment that you couldn't pay for that was the penalty for your sin so the way that heaven sees it is you've already been punished. All the wrath has already been, happened to you already. That's why you have peace. Everything that you would ever do, past, present, future, everything, the penalty for that was placed on Jesus on the cross. That was God making you pay. That was God punishing you for everything you would ever do wrong. When you accepted Jesus, then the punishment for everything you would ever do has already been punished on Calvary. Now, do you see? So because of that punishment already being done in advance before you would ever commit the sin, there is nothing left to punish. It's already been taken out. Therefore, the only thing left is peace with God. <laughs> when you understand that, then you will stop coming to him with condemnation. And with sin 
consciousness. You will come to him with righteous consciousness and say, I'm justified, I'm holy, I'm accepted. I'm, he's made me acceptable. He's made me uh, holy. He's made me sanctified, not based on works, based on faith. <laughs> there were some works involved, but it wasn't your works. It was his works. <laughs> There was some holiness and some law keeping involved, but it wasn't your holiness and law keeping. It was his holiness and law keeping. And God gave you credit for it as if you did that. That way he could accept you like nothing's wrong. <laughs> Woo! That's good news right there, man. That's good news right there. <laughs> that I can come to him based on the works of Jesus. So as it was with Jesus, so it is with me. The way that he could call on God. I'm supposed to be calling on God the same way. The same way that he can lift his head up with innocence, without sin. Then, then I'm supposed to be able to do the same thing because I'm trusting in his righteousness and not my own. <laughs> Whew. Man, that's heavy. Let's continue. Verse 15. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, and this is, I would say to you today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion through unbelief. Watch. 16. For who, having heard, rebelled? He asks the question. Who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt? Who, who was that? Led by Moses, who was that? The Israelites, according to the flesh. They were physical Israel. We are spiritual Israel. Continuing. <clears throat> now with whom was he angry 40 years? And that's why he was angry. He was angry because of their unbelief. Again, unbelief can make God mad at you, angry, punish you. Unbelief can do that. <clears throat> so you'll get treated with an angry by an, by an angry God if you're not believing the gospel properly and and um, living by faith and you trust in works. You, you you can make God angry with you by doing that because you insult the spirit of grace. You insult all the work that was paid for for you and all the punishment that was put on his son and, and, and you're making that in vain. You're saying that you're going to trust yourself instead of all, of all of that that he did through his only begotten son. <clears throat> Let me continue. Um, verse 17. Now, with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned? What kind of sin? Talking about law keeping? No. What kind of sin? Sin of unbelief. Was it not with those who sinned, according to unbelief, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? but to those who did not obey. In what way did they not obey? In what way did they not obey? They did not obey, not talking about law keeping, not talking about commandments. And the way that they did not obey, he's talking about the sin of unbelief. They did not obey because they did not believe the gospel. The gospel was preached to them in the Old Testament through the prophets. Yeah, Moses even said that there's coming one who's going to come out of Judah. Him you shall hear in all things. Yeah, so the gospel was preached to those in the Old Testament that they may believe in it before it happened. Yeah, Isaiah saw the crucifixion of Jesus. He saw past it, the crucifixion. And said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. That is a, a, a generational curse. A 
the, the chastisement for our, our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. He saw the crucifixion. He preached it based on prophetic insight. He foresaw that. And he preached it to those in the Old Testament. Now, those who believed, they were kept in a place called Abraham's bosom until that price was actually paid for in full. Then when it was paid for in full, then, then um, Jesus set those captives free from Abraham's bosom and said, it's done now, you can go to heaven. They believed it before it happened. We're believing it after it happened. <clears throat> so their disobedience was, they didn't believe the gospel. They, they were still trying to earn righteousness by works of the law, law keeping, scribe and Pharisee teaching, all about your performance, not about what God did through his son, Jesus. Let's continue. This is why it's so hard, man, and people are laying heavy yoke on people. Um, let me just say this. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. You who are heavy laden, cast your cares on me. Lay your yoke upon me. Take my yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Just live by faith. Stop trying to earn it. Stop trying to qualify. Stop trying to impress God with how good you are. Stop. You, you're wasting your time. He's not even looking at that. Your righteousness is as of a filthy rag. Your best works, filthy rag. <laughs> yeah. He says, stop trusting in that way and depend on me. Take my yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Okay. Um, let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 18. Um, let me read verse 18 with verse 19. I'm going to read 18 again, and then I'm going to read 19 so that you can see what it's talking about when it says they didn't obey. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? Obey, did, did, did not obey how? Did not obey how? What did they do? Let's see what they did. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. So they disobeyed God through unbelief. This isn't talking about law keeping. This isn't talk, talking about they broke a couple of commandments. That, that's not what this is talking about. This is talking about the gospel was preached to them through the prophets and they didn't believe it. They decided they're going to lay that aside. They're not going to listen to it. They're not going to believe it. They're going to work for their own righteousness and try to strive toward God by effort and works of the law and try to deserve it. That's, that's what they did. And it made God angry because he said, I gave you a way out. And you chose to stay in bondage of your performance, trying to live by, trying to be justified by the works of the law instead of justified by faith alone, apart from the deeds of the law. Whew. Let's continue. Now, we're at chapter 4. I'm just going to read some of it. I don't want to give you information overload, but I'm going to read some of the fourth chapter. Therefore, now again, it's talking about rest again. And I'm going to explain that rest because I've already explained the peace that Jesus said, peace be with you, is peace with God, meaning no condemnation is in you anymore. And that you have peace with God because your sins are dealt with. So you should not be sin consciousness. You should be righteous consciousness. Knowing that you're accepted in the beloved Jesus. Therefore, since there, I'm in, I'm in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse one. Therefore, since there remains a promise of entering his rest, let us fear. Now, that doesn't mean be afraid, but let us fear, lest any of you uh, seem to have come short of it. That fear is a fear of reverence. It means um, he's warning you that to, to, to fear in terms of 
reverence toward entering into that rest. Meaning, it's not a fear of being afraid. There's two fears. There's a fear of being afraid and there's a fear of reverence. That is talking about the fear of reverence here. It's saying that you're going to fall short of something. You're going to miss out on something so good for you if you don't understand this. You're, you're, you're going to lack something that you should not be lacking. And you're going to miss out on the benefits of it if you don't um, understand how to enter into the promise of God's rest through faith in Jesus. So he says, um, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. He doesn't want you to come short of it. He doesn't want you to fall short of entering into the rest of God, the promised rest of God. Let's continue. Verse 2. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. So they heard the gospel. Israel heard the gospel in the Old Testament. They heard it. The same gospel that, that we hear today. That was preached to them through the revealing of it from the prophets. They saw it happen. They knew that it would be paid for. They knew that 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 man would would um, would be be uh, would be required to live by faith alone, apart from the deeds of the law, and that God would justify man by faith in Jesus. That was preached to them, and they did not receive it. They didn't believe it. They continued to strive toward God based on works of the law, based on their own righteousness, not his. Not his righteousness. Let's continue. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them. Here's why. It, didn't, it did not profit them. Here's why. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Let me continue. For we who have believed do enter that rest. For we who have believed do enter that rest. We who have believed do enter that rest. So they didn't enter the, the rest of God because they, they didn't believe the gospel. They didn't believe that Jesus paid the price for their sins. They didn't, so, they, so, they, so they could not enter into the rest of God. I'm going to explain a little bit further um, about that rest. So it says in verse 3, we who, um, we who have believed do enter that rest. So you enter the rest based on faith. You enter the rest based on what you believe. You enter the rest based on believing the gospel, believing that Jesus paid for your sins and that you're accepted to God by faith in Jesus. When you believe that, you enter into the rest. But if you try to add to that and qualify based on works, good works, good deeds, and you're, you're trusting that in order to connect you with God, then, then you, you fall short of the rest and you separate from God because the way that you're, you're trying to seek Him is an Old Testament way, which is works. But we are not under the Old Testament covenant. We're not under the Old Testament law. We're under the New Testament covenant. We're under the New Testament law. We're under grace now. So the way to seek him and to connect with him is by faith alone in Jesus. Once you believe, God is connected with you. You receive the Spirit of God. You receive power. You can pray and get an answer. You can hear from God. You can, you can, you can even see angels. From time to time, if you even tap into that level, all kind of stuff can happen because of that connection. Yeah. I have personally spoke to angels and seen them and heard from them and were given instruction. Yes. Let's continue. <clears throat> For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said... <clears throat> So I swore in my wrath, they should not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place. Watch this. He has spoken in a certain place. He has spoken in a certain place. Of the seventh day, in this way, 
and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. <clears throat> Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, some must enter it, some must enter it, some must enter it, some must enter the rest of God. Since therefore <clears throat> it remains that some must enter the rest of God. <clears throat> Watch this. And those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience, the disobedience of unbelief again. Again, he designates a certain day saying in David, that would be us. Today, after such a long time as it has been said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them a rest, <clears throat> then he would not have afterwards spoken of another day. So the, the, the rest that Joshua gave them, that, that wasn't the promised rest that he's talking about. That wasn't this. This is different than, the, than what Joshua offered. Um, <clears throat> there remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. A rest for the people of God. Now watch this. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Now, now, now let me explain this. Let me explain this. The writer is comparing how God created the world in six days and then on the seventh day he rested. He rested because everything was finished and done in six days. So he ceased from any more work, any more doing of work, any more performance. He ceased from all performances of creating the world because it was already done. It was already created in six days. So on the seventh day, God killing, kicking back in what was finished. Now, he, sa he compares this to how we enter into the rest of God. The same way that God ceased from his works because it was finished in six days and he rested on the seventh day. He likens that to how we are to enter into the rest of the promised rest of God. That we, the way to enter it is to cease from our labor as God did from his. So we are to cease from working um, to, to become righteous, working to be approved by God, working um, to, to try to do, deserve a, a salvation or deserve something from God, working trying to keep a bunch of laws in the book working to to uh to, to try to qualify we are to cease from that understanding that jesus has already qualified us he has already paid for everything in full he has already completed the work so the same way that that God rested on the seventh day because everything was finished and completed in six days, we are to, um, <clears throat> to rest in faith in Jesus, understanding that I don't have to do any good works in order for me to connect with God. I don't have to, my performance doesn't connect me with God. My faith in Jesus connects me with God, believing that, 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 that he died for my sins, believing that he was raised for my justification, believing that he did everything perfect in God's eyes as a representative of me, and by accepting him, I receive his credit with my name on it. The work is finished, so I don't need to redo that. If I, if, I, if I tried to redo that, then I reject that payment 
I reject those benefits if I'm trying to lay that foundation all over again. So he who enters into the rest of God has ceased from works of the law to become righteous, works of performances before God, doing a bunch of good deeds, thinking that that's going to connect you with God or make him like you. Um, you have ceased from that and understood that that is not the basis by which you're connected. The basis by which you're connected is the finished work of Jesus. That connects you. And to live by faith in that and not trust in your performance, that's how you connect with God. Once you do that, once you believe that way, then you'll receive the Holy Spirit. You'll receive the Spirit of God, which is part of God, but a part of God that can dwell in you and deal with you one-on-one, -on -one, show you things, speak to you, give you dreams. And in those dreams, you'll get, you'll get answers. You'll see stuff, sometimes prophetic dreams about the future and about your future guiding you into destiny and helping you to, to, to with things that, that you want to see done and things that you even, even things that you desire. He will even give you the desires of your heart in some areas. You know, some, some people think that, um, that, that to serve God, that God's going to take away all your fun and the things that you like and you won't be able to be this or be that. Not, not true. Not true. He actually uses a lot of what you already want to do, but 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 he causes it to be done in a way where he gets the glory, where people can see that God is active in your life and so that they can trust in him and say, wow, he's real. Wow. He, it, it, there's others that suffer and you're not. There's others that, that can't make it, but you do. The, the, Everyone lost their job. You still have yours. You're being promoted. You see what I'm saying? He, he, he has a way of, of, of doing things in, in such a way to where those who don't know him will begin to say, someone's, someone's with you. Some, something is, is on your side. There's, there's some additional help that you have in order for uh, you to keep rising. In, in situations like this when, when others who don't believe the way you do are not. They're, they're, they're getting into traps and jams and, 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 and um, coming to the end of the road. But, but for you, 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 because of your faith, God is, God is working favorably in your life. So what they recognize is the favor of God working in your life. So again, Enter into the rest of God and receive the peace of God that Jesus spoke to you. Understand that under the New Testament, which is where we are, that's what we're living under. That's the law that we're living under now. The New Testament law of faith is to, to understand that you're not qualified because of your good works. You're qualified because of Jesus' good works and because you believe in him. That is the only thing that causes God to embrace you. Anything else does not. It is, it is, um, it is you rejecting. If you're trusting in anything else for God to embrace you, then you're, 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 um, you're putting aside what was paid for and you're saying that I'm going to try to work for it myself. It's kind of like if someone needs, let, let me just use $100. If someone needs $100 and I Western Union $100 and give them a, a control number to go and pick it up, I've already paid for that for them. Now they can choose to reject it 
and go do do a bunch of things to try to earn a hundred dollars but but i've I've already given that to them. All they need to do is just go and receive it and give them the control number. Jesus has already paid for your salvation. He has paid for your righteousness before God, your holiness before God, your acceptance before God. He's paid for all of that. And all you have to do is give him, give God the control number, which is faith in Jesus and pick it up. It's that simple, y'all. And as you do that, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. You um, dwell in you. You're going to receive power. Um, when you pray, you'll see stuff happen. Your prayer will be effective immediately if you believe this way. I'm going to say that again. Your prayer will be effective immediately if you believe this way. I'm talking about you can you can pray for um, a miracle to happen in your body where you're physically <laughs> something is wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? And you you can actually receive a miracle in your body, and and these things can happen immediately, quickly. I've seen it happen. I, I prayed for a deaf man, like I told you. I prayed for a deaf man. He got a new ear, and he was able to hear. <laughs> yeah, immediately outside in the street so there's a level of grace that we can walk in that that um that causes us to have that kind of connection with god so you don't you don't earn it you don't earn it you you believe for it and that's what the new testament is all about it's about not earning anything it's about believing for everything and and, and trusting in the finished work so there you have it, y'all. That is, in a nutshell, the peace of God and the rest of God. Peace.